Gagorobachi has never looked better for the first time reader to get into the series, and here is why. Because we are now officially 19 chapters deep as of this chapter. We started the second arc of Kagurabachi as a whole, and this is a fast-paced series. There is a lot that has happened within those first 18 chapters, and it is as fast as a pace of a series as it comes. I'm going to keep it stack with you. I don't think that sentence just made sense. Anyway, 18 chapters for its first arc, and it has set a phenomenal precedent for the art style, the story it's telling, the world it's building. And on top of this, Kagurabachi actually just released its first volume and is becoming increasingly hard to find due to the popularity of said series and said volume however chapter 19 has officially arrived and it sets us up with the next arc which i'm gonna affectionately dub the shinuchi retrieval arc uh, i don't know if it's gonna be called that but i'm just gonna call it that it feels like it should be relevant to the name uh, but the shinuichi is a mystic katana that is ready to be put up for auction at the raku zaichi auction which is an event that we have been basically building up to since the beginning of the series here and for some time however takiru just hit us with the cleanest well not so much the cleanest but a nice little misdirect within this chapter here you see we've been following shihiro and him fighting against sojo and his men under the assumption sojo was working for the folks who would host the auction However, it has been revealed that Sojo had absolutely no connection to the auction at all. What Takaru is planning to do with all of this and where the story goes remains to be seen, but we've been given a bit of a mystery to unravel as the story unfolds. And that's where Kagurobachi actually excels. It, it was currently excelling for me anyway. It's something that I love about a good shonen story, or just any story in general, any form of media, is that it's a good mystery. I love the idea of connecting the dots between something that the author's trying to tell us and also coming up with my own crazy crackpot theories uh, to try and explain what I'm seeing with the pages here. However... Takaru drops us into a flashback of someone spectating Sojo versus Shihiro and their first round here, their first fight, and the encounter that started all of their rivalry and all of their intense back and forth. However, this unknown spectator, who's later named as Hakuru Sazanami, uh, basically has his life changed by witnessing Shihiro tank a lightning blast, which, if I'm honest, is pretty based. I think if I watched a dude tank a lightning blast, I think I'd probably reevaluate my life also. However, it is confirmed to have been 18 days now after Sojo's passing, which I'm still in copium about that he's not dead, to be honest, but that's, that's neither here nor there. However, we catch Hakuri in a tight spot. He is trying to become some sort of vigilante after seeing uh, the samurai Shihiro tanking the lightning bolt, and he is trying to rescue a little girl who, um, for YouTube monetization purposes, I can't really say what is about to happen to her, uh, but think along the lines of it rhymes with Weffery Pepsi type shit. It's very dark. Uh, the implications here in this chapter are actually kind of very dark. It's 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 very dark. Yeah, I think it yeah. Anyway, Hakari Hakari? No, that's the wrong series. Anyway, Hakuri tries to use sorcery to take these dudes out. Now, keep this image in your mind because it comes back into the fray a little bit later. However, Shihiro appears and absolutely decimates the entire floor, which is it's a good thing because Hakuri here absolutely failed on his uh, Iso attempt here. Now, in my previous video, I mentioned that I wasn't so sure Shihiro was going to be able to recover his arm. I speculated that Shah may not actually have the capacity to heal him yet, and it kind of looks as if I was right there, which I'm kind of sad about. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep a stack with you. I didn't really want to be right on that one, but it seems as if I am kind of right. Uh, Shihiro seems to be back in perfect health. However, he is actually missing an arm and we know this because we see this in multiple frames uh multiple panels which it's obviously pretty brutal it's a brutal reminder of the fight that happened between him and, Sh and sojo and as i theorized i think i said this in the video or maybe i said it on twitter i can't remember follow me on twitter by the way but also uh i feel like he may be choosing to leave the arm unhealed purely out of a reminder for sojo and what sojo stood for because remember so far within these 18 chapters sojo was the complete and utter opposite of shihiro they were two sides to the one coin here they represent complete and utter opposing values and sojo really made shihiro fight for his fucking life so it is a potential that he is choosing to purposefully not heal that arm 
But you guys also left a lot of theories in the comments below, and I wish you would do that same thing on this video. Also, also make sure to like the video. Hey, you, you guys left a lot of theories on what you think might happen with this arms, and I saw one the other day, which I think was also on Twitter, uh, that Shihiro could possibly use Nishiki to recreate a new arm for combat, which I can't lie, I think that would be sick. I really, really like that idea. But the fact that we are 19 chapters deep and Shihiro has suffered such a grave injury is actually kind of wild to me. It's even more wild to me that this actually hasn't been healed yet so if i had to guess i would suspect that we are going to be seeing shihiro for the foreseeable future with only one arm a true new one-armed protagonist shanks good style i can't really think of any other one-armed protagonists now that i'm thinking about it. shanks isn't really a protagonist i'm gonna shut the fuck up next part however we get this flashback of shihiro and shiba talking about the events that transpired at the castle basically which leads to a reveal of what i mentioned before that sojo actually had nothing to do with the auction uh, and how he came to possess the mr katana cloud gadget still remains to be seen we have no idea how he actually came to be in the ownership of said blade however it is revealed that mr hakuri here is actually part of the powerful a very powerful sazanami family uh, and the figure that we saw used to represent that family looks awfully similar to the same sorcery that hakuri tried and failed to use known as iso which makes me wonder if just like jujutsu kaisen and naruto techniques can be inherited genetically or even taught within specific families uh but it's definitely something that i would like to see more of i mentioned this in the last video here it's something i would like to see takaru do is expand more on that power system i'm gonna circle for a good power system is one of the reasons i really love jujutsu kaisen and hunter hunter i love uh, a deep in-depth power system but i'm okay with a bit of a mysterious one and stuff a bit left up to a chance here i would like it maybe even if he explained it in a way that yeah all the guys in the universe they kind of don't know what's going on they're tapping into a power that they're not quite sure they can control yet but some of them have learned to harness it in certain ways here we have it hakuri here tries to speak to shihiro but shihiro he kind of wants nothing to do with this dude's business and he tries running away from him until he realizes he's actually part of the family that he's trying to find that actually the family found him first essentially uh and there we have it in one chapter takaru just gave us a flashback sequence giving us a different perspective on round one of sojo versus shihiro and how that affected that person's life setting up the goal for the coming events and how that person who spectated that one fight that seemingly seemed innocuous to us is actually going to come back into the story and help us progress the story further which i kind of really like that story i like that kind of elements of storytelling will it go smoothly probably not uh there's a lot of mysterious moving parts going on right now and i'm incredibly interested to see where it all goes but if you haven't already you should 100 go and read kagrabachi support the official release uh, and also consider subscribing to the channel for more kagrabachi content we do that shit every sunday or monday here and we're going to be looking to put out more and more content because this is a really fucking fun series to cover but anyways that's everything from me as always i will catch you guys all in the next one much love big fucking kisses peace